In this video, what we're going to look at is an exercise where you have to use two different sheets or two different spreadsheets and do a combination of different things here. So if you look at the website here, we've got task eight, the exercise here, and this gives us the exercise you've got to do. And you have two files, two CSV files, comma, separated value files which we have to open in Google Sheets or import into Google Sheets. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll just look at the um, question sheet and bring that up. And you can see here it says, okay, so using a suitable software package load, J8 phone. Okay, so we'll start off with that. Got that second one here. Now, when you click on it, it should come up in a new window and it hopefully will give you the option to pick to open in Google Sheets. Now, if it doesn't do this, then of course you can pick to download it and then you can open up Google Sheets and do file and import. So I'm gonna try this way. Hopefully it'll let me. Okay, so it's creating a new, okay, so look, it says unable to convert document. Okay, so not a problem. I will just download it instead. So when you download it, of course, it goes to your downloads folder. We've got that one, right? So that's that one downloaded. What I'll do is I'll close that, go back here and get J8 code as well. And I will also download it. So J8 code looks like this and download. Right, so once I've downloaded it, what I want to do is then um, I can close my website here and what I'll do is open up a Google Sheet. So from my email here, I can do it. So open up Google Sheet or you could do it from the task in Google Classroom. That's another option. So I'm just going to do a blank document here. And I've got to now import those sheets, right? So the first one I'll do import. And I'll need to upload a file now, select from my device. And if I go to downloads, I should be able to find it in here. So it was J, I think this is all alphabetic ordered. J at phone, there you go. Select that. And to say import data. That's going to replace the spreadsheet. Now, what that will do is replace all the information that I've got here. Right, which is great, got that one, but I want now to open the other sheet. So to open the other sheet, I will do to, um, import again, do the same thing, upload, select, and from the download folder, go down to find it. Here it is, uh, J, hmm. is it J8 code, right? So just this code. Now, when I pick this one to upload or to put in here, it says, instead of import location, create a new spreadsheet, what I want to do is insert new sheet this time. Okay, so I'll pick this option and import data. Right, so now you can see I've got J8 phone down here and J8 code, right? So this is very, very important because this is what we're going to need to use these two sheets. As you can imagine, we're likely to do something like a lookup or a V lookup with this information. Um, it just isn't on the same sheet, which isn't a problem. Okay, so we're going to look at the first question. And the first question said to open that up. Then second one in the department column, use a lookup function to show the department name. Okay, so <clears throat> in the department column. So here we've got department and we've got to do this lookup function that would look up and it says use the decode column for the lookup. Right, so this decode here. So what we're going to do, I want to do a VLOOKUP. You can do um, just uh, a lookup, but obviously the differences are that one is um, ordered and the other one is not. Okay, so VLOOKUP would look up an uh, unordered list and lookup generally looks up a, a list that's been in, put into order. Okay, so we're going to look up that and it says here, use the decode column for the lookup value and the file J8 code, which we already have for the array. 
make sure that you use both absolute and relative self-referencing for the function. Okay, so when I do the comma here, so I'm looking up this one, MD, and when I go to J8 code, I just want to select these codes. Now, the top two are just the titles, aren't they? So I'll just select these ones. And you can see what it's done here. It has put J8 code exclamation mark, which basically means this sheet, and then A2 to B3, or B13, okay? Now, it does say here that we need to use absolute cell referencing, okay? So what we need to do is you can do um, F4, or if you're on a MacBook, it's function F4, and that will put these dollar signs before the letter and the number uh, for the cell uh, on all of them. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm still here. I'm not gonna skip back to this one yet. Okay, I'm gonna stay here in this J8 code, and I'm just gonna go up to the formula bar along the top here, and I'll just do comma. And the next one I want to say is just which one do I wanted to come back with. Well, I'm looking up this one, so I wanted to come back with the second one. So I just put two, and then I can uh, close the brackets. Okay, so now it's saying managing director. I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so that is my formula for this. And then the next thing I would ask us to do would be to replicate this down. So if I double click, usually it'll let us replicate that down. And if we just double check it, maintenance, for example, MA is maintenance. So you can see we've actually got more codes than the ones that have been used here. Right, next one we want to do is enter the following data into the model, that's easy. So we just do 1.1. Make sure, um, some people have seen making mistakes where you may have done one comma one like this. Notice the way it sits on the left. What this is telling you is that this has been recognized as text. Now this is something that happens in Spain, because in the Spanish numeral system, you generally do use a comma to, as a, instead of a decimal point. But if I do 1.1, 1 .1, so that's the full stop one, you can see it sits on the right. So that means this is recognized as a number. So that's important. If you see it um, going to the sitting on the left like that, then that means it's been recognized as a string or text which you don't want because you can't use that to do any calculations. Okay, so that's 1.6. Right, name the cell containing 1.1 cheap. Okay, so this cell, I want to, I can right click on it, define named range, and that is B2, and it's gonna be called cheap, and done, right? Then I want to go on to the next one, call that in, uh, Intel or International. Done. And P needs to be peak. So another one, peak. Okay, so that's my named ranges done. So I can uh, close that. Right, format these three cells as numbers to one decimal place. Okay, so these two already have to one decimal place, but this one doesn't. So if I just select three of them, and up here, I can increase the decimal place like this and decrease it down. So you can see I can do this kind of thing. And so that does two or more. I just want to bring it to there. Okay, perfect, right. Uh, format says A2, A2, so that there are red lines. A2, three, right, so red lines up here. Red lines. Use a count if function that includes both absolute and cell reference in, in cell C7. So C7 um, to count the number of MD entries in the decode column. So we're probably not talking about this decode column. Right? We're talking about the one below. Okay, And it does say, do not count any entries in row 1 to 13. Right? So 1 to 13 is all of these ones. So what we want to do is um, do a count if, and it says to use absolute and relative cell referencing. So what we're doing, we're looking for this one, we want to look for MD down here, all the ones that are MD. So we will do equals uh, count, count if, and if uh, what we do is we count all of these cells down the bottom, so I'm gonna drag it all the way down, so down to there, and that will want to be absolute, this bit. So I'm going to do F4, 
or my computer I'm using function f4 so that does that so these ones are always going to stay the same cells put a comma and then the criteria the criteria is going to be b7 which says md in it so if I close the brackets press enter it's telling me now that I've got 16 mds which are the manager and directors out of all of these down here okay and then because I've done absolute cell referencing and not absolute so this is just relative this is absolute so because I've done that I can then replicate this down and you can see it's given me the right numbers so if I go down to here it's still b16 to b89 just like here b16 to b89 okay so it hasn't changed this range hasn't changed it stayed absolute which is important okay so the next one is question eight use a function that includes both absolute and relative cell referencing in cell d7 so in d7 right here um, to calculate the sum of the duration column okay sum of the duration column if the decode column contains md do not include rows 1 to 13. okay now this is a little bit different what we've got to do for this one is something called sum if now sum if is a formula a bit like sum but we have the kind of if statement sort of in there so what we've got to do is we've got to say the range of cells we want to look at then identify the criteria so let's have a look and then afterwards then we sum whatever ones we want right so it said that we wanted to look and sum up say for example md here if i've got md down here i want to add up 430 359 all these ones that say md these ones but i don't want to add up that one right so let's have a look at how it works equals sum if so we will say first of all the range we're going to say this range again so the same range as before that has all of our values and i'm going to make that f4 right to make it absolute because we're going to use this for other ones as well then in here we say the criteria so we do a comma and we're going to put the criteria the criteria is going to be md so if any of these cells contain md then we want to sum this range of cells okay so i'll select all of these ones let me do it all the way down and i just select them all down to there and it's going to want to be um, an absolute cell reference as uh, absolute cells as well so f4 and then close the bracket now i'm going to close the bracket press enter and you can see it's giving me the total duration now you can see that that number is not going to be all of these added together right so if i did as an example equals sum and did all of these cells right it's giving me a far bigger number okay so what is this doing this is looking at all of this this range all the way down and if any of them contain md like this first one then it's going to take this cell and add it to this one that says md there this one this one and then further down it's going to take this one this one and this one right and so on okay so that's what this sum if does and this is a new formula or a new function so to say so we have the range that you want to look up essentially so you want to look up the decode and if it is equal to b7 which has got the word md in it then we want to add up the equivalent the equivalent along here add those cells together All right so it's a clever function and now because we've done the absolute here and here and left this as relative we can replicate this down and if i look at this one you can see it's uh, still got the same ranges of cells all the way down which is perfect okay right so that's a difficult question because that's a that's a difficult one because it's a new type of function that you're seeing there 
Right, so now in uh, question number nine, we've got in the units column cell E16, right, so down here, E16, um, use an if function to calculate the units, use if the code is C, if the code is I, if the code is P, if the code is not C, I or P. Right, so this is a nested if. Now you've done some notes on this, but you haven't really done much practice of doing it. So this is how we do it. So we're gonna start off with the first one, if the code is C. So if, and you could write in here is equal to C, or you could use this C up here. It wouldn't really make a difference, right? So. If I did, um, if I click on that C up there, I just have to make sure I make it absolute every time. But if I do it here, so if this code is equal to, and then I would have to, I would either press on the C up here like that, because that contains C, so it would be cell A2, or I would put in quotes a capital C, just like it is here. All right, so that's just one option. You can do it like this. And this might be the easier way because then you can see the letter rather than the cell reference. Okay, so if it's equal to C, what I do? I need to multiply the named cell cheap by the duration. Okay, so cheap was this one, right? So I need to do cheap multiplied by duration. So that's what's saying. So then multiply the named cell cheap by the duration. Okay, so once I've done that, comma. So that's if it's C. Now, if it's not C, then I want to check if it's I. So I just do another if. So this is usually where you put the false, but I'm just gonna do a nested if instead. So there's my true, or my, my logical statement here. This is if it's true, and then this is kind of like if it's not true, but I'm doing another if. So I do the exact same thing. If this one, C16, is equal to, and this time, I, I'll do a capital I, and quotes, because it's text, then I need to multiply the next one down, which was Intel, multiplied by duration, which is D16. And then we do P, right? So comma, and we do if, open bracket, and we do the code again, which is C16. If it's equal to P, capital P, and then I do a comma, and I multiply the cell peak, so the one that was called peak, multiplied by duration, again. And then comma, now this time, we're now then saying if that's false, right? So this is the false, if it's not C, if it's not I and if it's not P, then it would come back with something else. So uh, if the code is not C, I or P, then the units used should be zero. Okay, so I just put basically zero. And close the bracket. Now you can notice that it's more than one bracket. So I've closed this bracket, I've got to close another two brackets. So three brackets in total, because I've got three ifs. And if I press enter, is giving me this. Now, what you could also do with this is just check it. Does it work correctly? So here I've got P. So if it's P, it's 1.6, right? So 1.6 multiplied by 321, right? And that looks right, okay? So it works just fine. Now you would want to obviously test it with an I, the I and C. So what we'll do, I'll minimize the calculator and we will replicate this function all the way down. So I'm gonna just double click on that little blue bit and you can see it's replicated it all down. And what we'll do, we'll just check a couple of more ones just to be sure, all right? So we've got this next one, which is international here, which is the I. So I do 3.0 multiplied by one, oops, 1002, and did I do that right? No, sorry, I didn't do it right. Um, 3.0 
multiply it by 334 and there you go right so that one works and you can try a couple more and you can see if it works or not that's question nine okay so format all the cells in rows one to six and 15 to be centered line so one two six rows i'm uh, sorry format all the cells in rows one right so one you can then hold uh, control or command in uh, on a mac select all these it's just the headings here and make them center aligns and then make them question number 11 make them bold format only the units column to no decimal places so the units column we want to format that to no decimal places so you select them all and just bring it back right one like that set the page orientation landscape save the model as a pdf so you know how to do that and that would be and showing the formulas and the functions so what you needed to do would be to like show the formulas for that make sure it's spread out and then when you um, create it as a pdf so you say download pdf and you make sure that the page is landscape okay so i'm just going to move on to question number 16. save the data model and make a pdf of the values okay so the same thing but just the values and then it says hide rows 1 to 14. So if I select the rows 1 to 14 here and hide them. So remember to do the other steps that I haven't done, of course. So the previous steps where you're making PDFs, I'm not going to do those, but you need to do those. So make sure you do those. Um, so I'm doing number 17 now. And then it says hide column D. So select the column and hide column D. And then it says interrogate the data to find all the items where the code is i okay so you need to interrogate it says so interrogate basically means to do a filter so if i look at doing the filter over here i've got more and there's a filter and then code was i so if i just take untick these ones and then say okay i get all the ones that are i okay so it's done that, uh, make a PDF for that, and then select all the data, leave 1 to 14 and column D hidden, uh, hide column C this time. All right, so inter interrogate the data to find all the cells where the, right, okay, so you would then, after you've made the PDF for that one, what you would want to do is clear, select all, put all the information back, and it said, um, keep column D hidden and then hide column C. Right, so hide column C and then it says, interrogate the data to find all the cells made on the fourth. Right, so here, you got the fourth of the first 2008. So you can just untick these ones and then you've got that. Okay, so we've got a lot less. Um, where the decode is PU, right? So clear and then just do PU. There you go. Uh, or SA, right? So I've got to do the SA one too. And SA. There you go. Done. Right. And then make a PDF of that. And then the very last thing would be to select from all the data, only the data for department and total duration. Use the data to create a vertical bar chart. Okay, so we'll look at how to do this. What we can do is we can um, clear, select all, and we probably need to get back all of these cells. So I just did a little couple, this little arrow here, just to unhide them. You can just press on that and it'll unhide everything again. So once you've finished doing all the filters and so on, so I'm just going to make sure this is all cleared and selected all again. You can see that a filter is still being applied, obviously, by the, the little icon and these ones that haven't. So you can just, as I say, clear and select all and then press OK on that. All right, so that's that done. Right, so the last question, number 20, select from the data only the data 
for department and department and total duration. Okay, so selecting that, then I'm going to hold Control or Command. All right, I'm going to take the headings as well. So it's Control and Windows and Command to do multiple selections of different columns. And it says to create data to create a vertical bar chart. Okay, so insert chart. And it's going to come up on the right hand side. Okay, so it's already given me a vertical bar chart. And then label the chart um, with the total duration by department. So label the chart with the title, total duration. And it, it's almost done that for me, but I'm just going to change that to buy department put it exactly the way they've got it there and make sure that all the category axes are fully visible and that there's no legend make a pdf of this chart okay so as you can see at the minute that you can't see everything that's kind of like put it sideways a little bit so what we can do with the chart is we can actually change it to be on a new sheet so there is options for doing that. So if I just click on the chart, um, I need to get the resize chart, I think it is. There is an option here. If I just have a look for it. Total duration series, horizontal, no, I don't think it's there. Stacking, no, customize. Okay, so here, chart style, chart axis series, legend, and we one of these. Ah, here, here it is actually. Um, delete, publish chart, copy chart, move to own sheet. There you go. So it's on its own sheet. I can actually just skip it over here. And that's actually a lot bigger now. And you can see all of the information now fits. And then what I can do is download the chart as a PDF. So it gives you a direct option to do so right there. And you're probably going to want to put it into keep it keep it into landscape. But there it is, the PDF. It's already given me it, and I can just save that. Okay, so that is the end of that demonstration for that lesson. So next week you will probably do another task nine. Will be one very similar to this, where you might have uh, uh, lookups, some if now that that's been included. And you may also have to do this kind of thing where you're using two sheets here and possibly even create a chart from some of the information.